Hello, on this video, I'm going to talk about C++ exception using the try, throw, and catch. And for that, I'm going to create a new C++ project. Whenever you have a piece of code that you're not 100% sure that that code will execute without failing, then you should use the try, throw, and catch. If you know for a fact that nothing can go wrong, then you do not need the exception. So let's write some code here. So for example, to do a display hello world, that this code here will not have a problem. It will always run. No matter what I do, this code will always run. Now, let's say if you're trying to do a division, let's say if you ask the user to enter a value. All right, so let's say you need to do a division of two numbers and you ask the user to enter the denominator. So let's say you have int d So let's say you have this code. So if you run this program, and if the user enter denominator one, everything is good, the calculation goes right. But if the user decides to enter denominator zero, for example, then now we have a problem. And the problem is because it tries to divide the 10 by zero, and it can't. So in this case here, we know for a fact that this code may not be successful all the time. So this is a perfect case for us to use the try, throw, and catch. So before I do the calculation here, I'm gonna use a try. So I'm gonna put everything here in a try, and the try works like that. So try, then catch. So inside the try is the code that you're trying to test if it's right or wrong. And then the catch is when you catch whatever exception, whatever problem that came up. So in this case, my entire try is going to be the code that I'm trying to run. Now, this part here most likely will never have a problem. So I can put it outside my try. However, it's okay to put this code inside or outside the try block. If something goes wrong, I want to throw a statement. So in this case here, I want to make a if statement. And if d equals zero, then I need a elegant way to deal with this problem. And for that, I'm going to use the throw statement. And now I need to catch that. You can have as many catches as you want, but each throw will throw a data type. In this case, it's throwing an integer and you need to catch that integer. So because this is throw is zero, so I'm gonna catch a int num and then here I can choose what to do. So at this point, I know there's a problem, and here I can choose what to do. I am just gonna put a message here saying the nominator can't be num. After the catch, I'm gonna put a C out here saying everything is good. All right, so let's run this program. I'm gonna put the nominator two, Everything is good, no problem. But at the moment that I put the denominator equals zero, now we have a problem. And the problem is displayed right here. And after you handle the problem, the code keeps on executing. It doesn't fail. If we did not have this throw right here, and if we did not have the catch, then the everything is good would never be executed because the program would crash. So the goal here is to avoid the program crashing. 
So you can throw whatever exception you want. So I'm gonna do a cleanup here on the code just to show you. So let's say I have int age equals 20 and I'm writing a program to check if the person can go to a bar to drink beer. So in this case, I can say, hey, if age less than 21, then throw patron is less than 21 years old. In this case, I'm throwing a string. And right now, I do not have any string to catch that exception. So I need to create a catch that catches a string. So a string str, and I'm gonna put a message error str, and that gives me I get an error, and the error is because I need to cast this to a string. So now if I run this program, now I get an arrow, say, hey, the patron is less than 21 years old. So in this case, I'm throwing a string as an arrow, and therefore I must have a catch that receives a string as an arrow. Now, what if I wanna throw an exception? Instead of throwing a string, I wanna throw an exception. So, if I'm throwing an exception here, now you'll be caught by this catch. So now I can put a message here saying, I'm the exception, and I'm gonna put a name for this exception, it's gonna be exception E, and then E dot what will get me the message that is in the exception. So I'm gonna run this program now. So here I get the I am the exception, and then the message patron is less than 21. So I'm gonna put a couple of space right here and an error just to be a little bit more organized and then I have that message. All right, so I can also have a generic catch. Instead of having multiple catches for multiple trolls, I can have a generic catch, and for that, all I have to put is three dots inside the parameter, and this is going to be my generic catch. And the generic catch catches everything. So, let's say if I want to throw here a double, one, two, three, four. Now, there is nothing here to catch the double. So because of that, you'll be caught by the generic one. So now if I run this guy, I catch the generic one. Missing a G here. So this catches everything. This catches only exceptions. This catches only integer. This catches only strings. So, as you can see, you can throw whatever data type you want. So, if you can throw whatever data type you, you want, can you write a class with your own arrow and throw it and then catch it? The answer is yes. So, let's create a class. And to create a class, I'm gonna right click, add, a class. I'm gonna name this class my exception. Click OK. And now on the class, I'm gonna add the public, privates, and the private. I'm gonna have a string called message or error. Hover over, show potential fix, add the string. Then I'm gonna also add the using namespace standard. And then finally here, I'm gonna create a constructor that takes a string as a parameter. 
Now I'm going to hover over, show potential fixes, create the definition of my X. And here I'm going to do the this error equals E. And I can see here that I have a misspelling on error. So I'm going to double click and then control RR. And once I do that, I can rename this guy. Or you can do a right click and then rename. And now I'm going to hopefully put the correct spelling. So error preview tells me where it's changing the spelling. Click apply. So now it fixed right here in this file and it also fixed on the header file. So that's one way to quick rename a variable. Rename is all over for you. All right, and the next thing I want to do, I want to create a string what function. And I'll hover over, show potential fixes, create a definition. And here, I'm going to return this error. So now I can go to my main program and now I can include the my x here and then finally right here instead of throwing a double I can throw my x and a message now when I get here I need to catch that exception so currently this exception is being caught by the default catch, by the generic catch. So if I run this program as is, it will get to the generic one. But I don't want to do that. I want to create a catch specifically for this one. So I'm going to copy and paste this catch. And then instead of a string, I'm going to catch my x. And then here I'm going to put my x. And then finally here, I'm going to put me dot what, and that is going to display the message that I threw on the my exception. So now if I run this program, I got here the my exception and then the message that I'm throwing. So in other words, you can throw whatever exception you want. And then on the catch area, you can have as many catches as you want. And you need to catch whatever data type you're throwing, or you can let it go to the generic catch that catches everything. And the sequence of code is try whatever you're doing trial, then goes from top to bottom trying to catch everything. Now, the generic catch has to be on the bottom. You cannot put the generic catch before other catch because at this point, this catch will never be executed. So the generic catch has to be at the end, anywhere but the end, and you're going to have problem. Your code is not going to compile. So it has to be the last catch. And then after that, the sequence of the other catches do not matter. So if I want to move this to the top, no problem. This code is going to run just fine. Only the generic catch has to be at the end. All right, so let me run this one more time. So the message now is like and subscribe with a misspelling. All right, like and subscribe, leave a comment for the algorithm. And I'm going to zoom out so you can see the entire code at once. And then let me show you also my header file in case if you want to do something similar. And my implementation. And I'll run one more time. And then here I have my exception. All right, so that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.